Hello everyone, Richard here again. Today I'm going to do a product review on the TP-Link Powerline Network Adapters. Uh, this is a kit I bought from Amazon, so I'll put links for that in the video uh, description below. i also put a link for it on eBay as well. Uh, this kit is called the TL-PA7010 kit. It involves, well, it includes two uh, power line network adapters which promise to deliver up to a gigabit of uh, Ethernet speed through your power lines, so through your wall plugs. So I'm going to test this out and see what kind of speeds and what kind of performance I can get from this or you can get from it so you can make a, an informed buying decision. Now the reason I bought these was because I always get asked on my connecting two uh, routers together and sharing the internet video, can I use network power line adapters instead of an ethernet cable between those two routers? The answer is yes, you can. But what kind of performance are we going to get uh, through these? I don't know. So I'm going to unbox them, test them out, and then you uh, show you the results. And then you can make an informed buying decision uh, before you spend the money on these instead of an ethernet cable. Let's unbox the TP-Link AV1000 Gigabit Powerline Starter Kit. This is the TLP-PA7010 kit. And I'll put links for this stuff in the video description below so you can buy it from Amazon or eBay. Um, also, in the, if you want to comment and leave uh, uh, you know, any comments, put it in the comment section below as well as questions or suggestions. I look at them regularly, usually daily, and respond very, very frequently. So if you have uh, any suggestions, video suggestions, anything like that, uh, definitely put them in the comment section below. And for links to this stuff, look in the video description. So we've got a package here from TP-Link two adapters it looks fairly attractive i wouldn't have any problem giving this as a present as far as the packaging is concerned um, let's see what this uh, says here on the outside there's some pertinent information here let's take a look all right we've got the uh, standards that it's going on this is neat it says 128 bit encryption over the power line so the data that's transferred over your power lines is encrypted at 128 bit so that's a, a little bit of a security for you so that uh, you don't feel that it could be hacked as uh, you know easily range is important up to 300 meters remember these are not Wi-Fi these are hardwired connected uh, devices it says 300 meters to a thousand feet over existing electrical wiring which is uh, actually about the same distance as an Ethernet cable can go in uh, maximum distance so pretty neat there uh, LEDs power line power and Ethernet standard stuff um, let's go zoom out here Back out again, All right? And and you know the typical configuration. You've got a computer plugging into it, and then it all going over a power line to a Wi-Fi or a router. Um, all uh, you know, hardwired again. So in your your computer or whatever you're going to connect to these two adapters needs to have an Ethernet adapt, uh, adapter in it. So a laptop with an Ethernet adapter, a computer with an Ethernet adapter, a camera, whatever it is that you're doing, using to connect to these adapters needs an Ethernet port. So yeah, more of the configuration, uh, what comes with it. Two adapters, one, two Ethernet cables, a quick installation guide, standard stuff. Uh, says software. Uh, we're going to have to download from TP Link, so we'll do that. I'll do that in the video. And we're back to the start. Let's take it out of the box, see what we've got. Again, remember that consideration that this maximum distance of wiring between the two of them, them will be 1,000 feet or 300 meters. Okay, so here we go. Open it up. Uh, I've got a technical support manual, no problem. A quick installation guide. Two Ethernet. Uh, power line adapters. Let's take a look at them. Fairly attractive little units. Uh, your gigabit port, Ethernet port on the back, uh, pair button, and three LEDs, just like they say, and the rest is pretty well just a white box. Same with the second one, it's exactly the same. Let's take that out. And let's see what we got for Ethernet cables here. Okay, we've got two here. They're identical. Let's see what we got. Um, what am I looking? Oh, there's what I'm looking for. All right. Ethernet cables for gigabit uh, connections should be at least 5E. That's the minimum. Or six, CAT 6 or higher, right? But 5E should be the minimum for Ethernet, uh, gigabit Ethernet. And this, these are CAT 5. So 
Uh, TP-Link should have given us at least a 5E cable, but these are not 5E, they're Cat5. So if you want to know what your cables are, usually it's printed on them. If they're not printed, if there's no printed, uh, uh, you know, letters on your cable, it's probably a cheap cable. Get yourself a, a Cat5e or higher. I would suggest Cat6 for any gigabit Ethernet connection. Uh, that's the standard, more or less. 5e will do it, but just barely. So I just go with the sixes. And uh, this is Cat5. So, eh, not too happy about that. But uh, I've got Cat6 cables, uh, you know, lying around here. I'll use them as well. But I will be testing with everything they sent to see what kind of speeds we get out of that stuff. So let's see what we got here. We've got two Ethernet cables, two adapters, no problem, the quick installation guide and the warranty uh, information or the support information underneath, technical support. And that's it. So let's plug these in and test them out. All right, we know this video is about power line adapters, but power line adapters are a network component. They're actually network uh, interfaces. So I uh, wanted to go through a little bit of a tutorial on networks so that people understand how this all works and they understand where the bottlenecks are and how uh, speed is affected by, by link speed, okay? So in networking, you're only as fast as the slowest link between you and the source of the data. So here I have a diagram of you know, a typical network plus the internet and a server on the internet. And reason for this is to, to you know, uh, explain to you how this, you know, how speed matters and where it doesn't matter, okay? So in this case, uh, let's look at the server connected to the internet. This server is connected to the internet at 10 megabits per second, and that's another important part. Uh, I, I've written it out here. Uh, network speed is uh, measured in megabits per second, where file sizes and, and things on computers are, are measured in megabytes. And there's an eightfold difference between those two. In other words, uh, a megabyte is, is eight times bigger than a megabit, okay? So you have to take that into consideration when you're looking at these speeds. So for example, this server here is connected to the internet at 10 megabits per second. Well, if you convert that to bytes, that's 1.25 megabytes per second. So, you know, say you, you wanted to transfer a 10 megabyte file from this, this server, it would take you 10 seconds to get that file from that server, okay? Again, a bit of math and just wanted to show you this. But the key point in this 10 megabit per second connection to the internet is that it's slow, right? So, Okay, so this server is connected at 10 megabits per second to the internet. What that means is that it can never transfer more than 10 megabytes, or sorry, 10 megabits per second to the internet. So even though this network here, which may be your home network, let's say, is connected to the internet at 600 megabits per second, if you connect to this server through, let's say, this laptop, you will never get more than 10 megabits of per second data from that server. So regardless of the fact that you have a 600 megabit per second connection to the internet, you have a gigabit uh, per second router and you're connected to it at a gigabit per second, you will never get more than 10 megabytes per second. Why? Because it just, it can't happen. There's, this is the slowest link between you and the source of your data and that's as quick as you're going to get data and that's that applies all the way along so let's say that that server was a thousand a, a gigabit per second into the internet right well that's great it's plenty fast but you no one on your network would be able to get more than 600 megabits per second out of that server because the slowest link between you and that server at that point would be this link, the 600 megabits per second, okay? So, you know, basically I'm just showing you how this all works so you can, you know, understand what to expect when you put these two power line adapters together to send data, okay? If they're the slowest link between the two, that's as quick as you're gonna get data through those power line adapters. And, and I, sh I, I signify this here. We've got a, a gigabit per second uh, laptop and a gigabit per second PC client and a Wi-Fi router that's a gigabit per second. Okay, so those two devices will be able to talk to each other at a gigabit per second. Very quickly, no problem at all. But you look up here and you have the 100 megabit per second PC client, okay? This client, this computer, will never get more than 100 megabits per second 
from anything, you know, not from the router, not from this laptop, not from the internet, not from anything. The fastest it can get data is 100 megabits per second. So because that's the slowest link between it and any source out there. So again, this is what I'm trying to signify here when you're using these uh, power line adapters is that anything that you connect to them will only be as fast as they are or the slowest link between them and you. Okay, so that's the network primer. Let's get at the next thing, which is uh, these little wires. This is uh, the Cat5 uh, wire that I showed you when we first, uh, uh, on the first introduction. And I have Cat6 cables. So I'm gonna test the speed of this Cat5 uh, between two laptops directly so that there's nothing in between. And uh, then I'm gonna test the speed of the Cat6 wire I have and see if it makes any difference. And then we'll go from there because if it does make a difference, uh, I would say you need to buy a Cat6 cable for the, the, these power line adapters. If it doesn't make any difference, then hey, use what they sent you, the Cat5 cable. I tested the Cat5 cable against the Cat6 cable I have, uh, the Cat5 cable coming with the power line kit, and uh, you know, just to see if there was a speed difference. And the way I did it is I connected this cable between two laptops nothing else just the cable two laptops uh, both of them had ethernet ports on them and both of them were gigabit ports so they were both talking to each other at a gigabit and just to test the cables i tested this one i guess against the cat 6 cable and these are the results i got uh, on the left i've got the cat 6 cable and you can see that i got 750,200 uh, kilobits per second uh, on the send and on the send on the right, which is the Cat5 cable, I got 596,443 uh, kilobits per second. So that's significant as far as I'm concerned because uh, the maximum that I could have theoretically gotten here would have been uh, a million kilobits per second. So on one side, I'm 75% of the actual maximum, on, which is the Cat6 cable. And with the Cat5 cable, I'm 59% of, of, of the uh, actual maximum so that that to me is significant that you know uh when you go to what uh, 16 percent difference in speed yeah that's worth paying the extra couple of bucks for the cat 6 cable and i'll put links for that in the video description below for everybody uh so that you can get it from uh, amazon or ebay and also on the received end you'll see that i got 795 five so almost 796 uh thousand kilobytes per second where on this side i got 783 so yeah all the way around the cat 6 cable outperformed the cat 5 cable which is exactly what should have happened and so i'm glad to confirm that for you so uh, let's move on to the next step which is uh, installing these things these power line adapters and testing them all right the first thing i want to show you is the tp link support site for this kit the tl-pa7010 kit and uh, things to note from the support site, number one, is it's got videos on how to set all this up and how to troubleshoot it and the frequently asked questions and so on. So, you know, before you go ask me these things, take a look here first, uh, dig around, and if they can't answer your questions, then, you know, uh, again, in, in the video description below, I'll put links for all this stuff, including this site uh, the, and the people who, and, and the Amazon links and where I bought these from, uh, and eBay as well. And... Any comments that you may want to ask or questions you have or suggestions, definitely put them in the comment section below on the video as well. So this site is important. I want to show you one thing here that's key on this. Uh, it's your version number. Now, if you don't know what version of Powerline Kit you have, uh, there's a version 1, 2, and 3. I have the V1, uh, but choose the one that you have and go use the support for that one. Uh, that's especially important if you're gonna do a firmware upgrade. Now, I'm not gonna go through the process of doing a firmware upgrade. I don't have to. Mine has the latest firmware right out of the box. So there's really no point of doing that. And you know, again, if you, if you wanna do the firmware update, just click on this link here and it tells you everything about it, how to do it, and the, it warns you, you see the red, you know, uh, links and everything. So read this very carefully if you're going to do a firmware update, okay? Because if you do it incorrectly, there is a chance that your power adapter will stop working. So if you don't need to, don't. But if, if you want the latest firmware, this is where you get it. And make sure that you get the right one for your version. If you don't know what version of Powerline adapter you have, 
check the bottom of the box or look on the back of the uh, power line adapter. It will tell you on a sticker where the serial number is, what version you have. And this also explains to you how to read that number, okay? So again, just making sure you guys are aware of this, all the actual uh, uh, user guides, uh, quick installation guide, and you know, uh, all that stuff is here in the manual links and uh, product overview as well as the data sheet. So, now you're aware of that. So let's move on. I used the quick installation guide to install these uh, power line adapters. And I noticed something on the, uh, a few things on the quick installation uh, guide. So I'll go through that with you. And they, the one thing that uh, stood out to me here was that they continue to say same electrical circuit. So you can see it here, same electrical circuit, same here. And, and it's even mentioned here in the text, same electrical circuit. Now, I'm not sure exactly what they're referring to, but I'm, I'm going to assume uh, because that's all I can do because it's not explained in this manual and that it's all on the same uh, panel circuit. In other words, uh, let's say your bedroom plugs are all on the same fuse on your, on your electrical panel, then they're part of the same circuit. And that's what I did. I put them all on the same circuit on a panel. In other words, I know that all the, all the plugs in my bedroom are on the same electrical uh, fuse on the panel. So I plug them in there and I plug them in as close to each other as, as possible, okay? Just to get, to make sure that they would pair nicely and quickly. And they did do, did do that uh, quickly. So here you can see that they tell you, you know, plug them in, plug them into your computer, into your router, however you're going to do this. And then, you know, they say it's, it's you know, easy and done quickly. Uh, but there's a few caveats. Number one, uh, it says, you know, do not plug them into power strips or power uh, bars because obviously they well they see it, they, it's a problem they say it's a problem so don't use a power strip or a power bar for this go directly into the wall plug uh, also they explain here what the LEDs do and how to pair them up so I'll show you how they look as you're uh, setting them up and here's the the first thing you're going to see when you plug it in when you plug it in it's going to be plugged into the wall plug and you're going to see a power light on the bottom and it'll be solid green. Now, when you uh, uh, hit the pair button, you're going to get this. Uh, actually, let's go to the next one here. Okay, when you hit, when you plug in the Ethernet uh, cable, you're going to get the Ethernet connection light, which is the top LED, the green one. And when you hit the pair button, the bottom LED, the power light, will blink until it connects to the other power plug or other plot or, or to the actual network itself. In other words, it connects to the other uh, wall plug. Uh, power adapter. So we're going to go to the next screen. And when they do connect to each other, you're going to see on both of them, three lights. Uh, the middle one, though it looks green, it's actually amber. And it has two states. It has this state, which is the fast state. It shows you that it's over 50 megabits per second when it's gr when this amber green color. And then the next one is the slow state. This is what you're getting if you have poor communication be between the two uh, plugs or in the system, whatever is showing you that red light is doing less than 50 megabits per second. And I'll explain that later uh, in the software because it shows you that as well. But these are the states of these uh, uh, plugs. And when you plug them in, you're going to get this only. And when you hit the pair button, that light down there will blink until it connects. And then you'll have either two lights if you don't have the Ethernet connector on it course you're going to have the ethernet connector what's the point without it when you put the ethernet connector on it again you have two lights again and when it connects that center green will either be amber or red so that's how you connect them you hit the pair button on both of them after you plug them in i would say plug them in for five seconds or so and then hold down the pair button for over a second and the power button will start blinking and then they'll find each other and connect so if we go to the manual here back down you can see that they show you how to do that and they show you how to you know uh, add uh, plugs to the whole system so it's pretty straightforward actually i mean i can't believe how easy they were to connect uh just basically pl plug them in wait five seconds hold the, the the pair button down on both of them for a second you don't have to do them simultaneously either you can just hold that down on one plug go to the other one hold it down on the other they'll blink they'll connect and that'll be that all right so that's the basic setup of these and then of course you got to connect the ethernet connectors to them and to whatever devices you want to connect together so that's the setup let's continue on here 
Um, again, if you have a problem connecting these together, I'm going to show you a bit of troubleshooting that I, I don't think they even show in the manual, but um, this system comes with a monitoring software as well, which I recommend and we'll show you how to install here in a second. Um, but they paired really nicely. They paired quite quickly for me. I was getting eight to 900 megabits per second. So the software was telling me and my results were telling me uh, a, a lower speed, but I'll show you that I'll do the testing on them so you can see what happens with them. They actually connected to each other or talked to each other on just about every plug in my apartment. Uh, including a GFI, which, which is a ground fault insulated or a ground fault protected uh, plug system in my, in my kitchen, which was surprising to me. But it did. They, they were talking from the bedroom through that uh, electrical system, and they were on separate fuse panel, uh, panel fuses. So in other words, the bedroom's on one panel fuse, the kitchen's on another panel fuse, and uh, you know all the plugs are on different fuses. And they still talk to each other. There's about three uh, wall plugs in the whole apartment where they didn't talk to each other. But you know what? For the most part, they worked everywhere. So I was very happy with that, that they didn't have to all always be on the same uh, you know, fuse uh, panel circuit to work. They, they will work across fuses. So bonus on that. So let's move on here to the next one. Um, the other thing too is once they paired together, I could unplug one, plug it in somewhere else, and it would just automatically just talk to the other one. Now, if, if they do uh, actually stop talking to each other, I'll show you, how, you know, you just try, you just do go through the pairing process again, or you reset them and then go through the pairing process, and I'll show you how to reset them here with the software in a minute. So, uh, pretty cool. So let's go get the software uh, back to the download site again. I'll put, I'll put links to all this stuff in the video description below. Uh, I'll put the uh, link for um, Amazon and eBay where to get these because I'm quite impressed with their performance. Also, I'll put uh, uh, links to the support site here in the video description below. And if you have comments or questions or even suggestions, put them in the comments section below. I check them regularly, usually daily, and respond to them equally regularly. And, uh, you know, I, I certainly appreciate any ideas or any questions, uh, and I'm happy to help you guys. So, all right, let's move on here. Um, I showed you about the firmware and, uh, you know, the version types. That's, that's no big deal. Uh, well, it is a big deal, but, you know, read the uh, instructions here and be safe. So let's go to the utility uh, link here, and this will give you the uh, different utilities available. Now, they have one for Mac, and they have one for uh, PC, okay? So I'm assuming you're using Windows, but if you're using Mac, they do have a, 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 a utility for that as well. So let's download the utility for uh, Windows because that's what I'm running. Save the file, and that's a zip file. I'll show you how to handle that here in a second. All right, and um, where am I gonna save it? Okay, look, I'll, I'll save it under TP-Link here. All right, and save it. All right, and that's in my downloads directory, and you can see it's downloading here. Okay, and when it's done, I'm gonna go here to the Powerline utility, and you can see that it has a little zipper on it. That means it's zipped. Uh, all you gotta do to unzip that, to uncompress it basically, is right-click it, choose Extract All, and it will extract it for you. Right, just just whatever the default is when you hit extract all, just hit extract. Done, and then it'll open up the file with the Power Utility software in it. So let's install it, so you know how to do that. Now, why do you want to install this? Because it monitors the system. It tells you which power plugs are working, which ones are, what speed they're connecting at. Uh, there's all sorts of neat features, and I'll go through the software here in a minute. So let's uh, double click that. And it gives you, do you want this, allow this app? Of course we do. And of course we want English. You choose your language, just it's a drop down, but I'm going with English, of course. And we'll go through the setup process. If it takes a long time, I'll compress it. I generally like to go real time on this stuff though. So set up wizard, uh, you know, Let's go through the next, next, next process. I agree to this, so, all right. 
and automatically start uh, this when it's when your machine starts yeah well if you're gonna be using the software you're gonna need that so I'm gonna hit install all right hit finish on that and now it's a two-piece installation so it installs that and then it installs the utility software so let's do that next go with the defaults install And this part seems to take a bit of time. I've done this on the other laptop as well uh, to familiarize myself with it. So uh, I'll cut to the end of this uh, when it's done. That took about a minute and uh, fairly straightforward installation. Nothing really crazy there. Just the bar goes across and you're done. So let's hit finish on that. And Let's go look at the software, okay? And I'll show you where that is right at this point. Minimize all this stuff. You can see here, TP PLC, right? So, power line controller. So, I'm, I'm just going to double click on this. And then it asks you, of course, for a user account control. You say yes. And I'm currently connected to the, one of the power line adapters on this laptop. And... Also on the other laptop. And here you get, uh, in my case, a security alert from um, Windows Defender. And uh, I'm just going to do both check marks. I don't care about that. It's just unblock it. Do not let this block because if you do, it won't work. So just make sure you put the check mark on both of them. You know, up to you whether you do or not. But that's the way I did it and it works. Okay, so allow access from my firewall. You may not even have a running firewall. Okay, and it has found both devices right off the bat. Now, I'm, I'm connected to one of these devices with an Ethernet cable, and the one that you're connected to is the one at the bottom, okay? So I'm physically connected to this one with an Ethernet cable, and then it goes through the wall to uh, through the power lines to the other one, which is uh, connected to the laptop, which is physically connected to uh, that power line adapter. Uh, with an Ethernet cable as well. And you can see here it's, it's refreshing. Now, power line rates, you can see here it says greater than 50 megabits per second. It's going to be amber. So it's talking about the LEDs and also about this light. The, sorry, this line. This line, as you can see, it says amber. But it also tells you the speed on it. So I'm not quite sure why they do this. Uh, also on the red, if it's red, right, it's going to say less than 50 megabit and megabits per second okay so it's megabits per second on both and this says 893 megabits per second which is really decent so as you can see this is really cool because it tells you that they're both up and they're both running okay now if you connect these to your laptop and then you're having a problem getting them both to talk to each other okay then what i would suggest is one by one reset them okay and there's there's special features here on on this and i'll show you that but the way you reset them and and it's not really intuitive until you see you see what happens when i put the the mouse over them this little tab comes out so let's let's open that up and you see you have a, a basic setting and you have an advanced setting so let's go to the basic setting and they both have the same thing see that okay and you know and we'll, we'll just go through them here okay so we've got basic and here you can rename the device, I guess, if you wanted to call it, uh, you know, bedroom wall socket or something or, you know, something pertinent, pertinent to where the actual device is, like upstairs office. You could change the name to whatever you want. Then we have the LED and then hit save and it will change it. And then we have the LED, which will allows you to turn the LEDs off. Let's say you have one of these in your bedroom and you don't want the light on all night. You can just choose to turn off the LEDs by hitting this button. This is key here. The reset. If you're having problems with getting the two to communicate with each other, I would say reset each one of them. So go into this software, like plug whatever, plug, you know, the device that, uh, you know, one of the devices to your laptop and reset it and it will reset and reboot and uh, uh, then you can reconnect it by using the pair button. Now I'm not going to go through that process. I'll click the button and it says, are you sure you want to do this? Of course, I don't because mine is currently working just fine. But if yours are not communicating, reset each one. So what you would do is you would reset this one, unplug it, take the other one, plug it into the wall, plug it into your laptop, start the software again and reset it as well. And then once they're both reset, plug them both in again, 
uh, hopefully on the same circuit, and then hit the pair buttons for over a second, and they'll talk to each other and hopefully connect, okay? Um, so let's continue on here. Uh, version, this is kind of important if you're gonna do a firmware ve version. Uh, this, my version is already the latest, which is the 627 version, nine, uh, underscore 902. You can, again, check that on the website under the firmware tab. You'll see here where mine says 627, okay? So uh, I guess there's an older one here, uh, uh, 920. Um, well, is that older or newer? Let's see. Uh, yes, it's older because it's 2016 and this is 2017. So, yeah, uh, if you have just bought these, you probably won't even need the firmware because this is old, 2017. It's 2019 now, so don't worry about the firmware that much. But that's what the version shows you. And let's close that off. So that, again, we're, we're, the one on the bottom is the power adapter physically connected to the Ethernet adapter on my, on my laptop. Okay, so let's go to the Advanced tab. Once it, done, it does a refresh every, I don't know, minute or two. Let's go to the advanced tab, see what we have there. This is more neat things that I didn't, I wasn't aware about on these power line adapters. They have a, what they call a quality of service uh, type. Uh, that's what QoS is actually sen stands for. It's quality of service. And you can uh, optimize the actual adapter to do, uh, to be faster on certain things. So if you're going to use this for online gaming, of course, it's, just by, by default set to online gaming uh, uh, speed setting. But then you, you can say, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to do voice over IP on it, which is like a telephone connection on the internet, or audio and video, or internet, and choose what you wish to optimize this. That's, that's really neat. All right, so that's a nice thing to know. And I would go in here and set these specifications to what you want to get the best performance. I'm going to leave it on online game for now. Let's go over here to uh, update. And this is where you would do your firmware update. Again, I'm not getting into this. Look at the support site for that. But that's where it is under the advanced tab. And then we have mode. Uh, this is power saving mode. This mode can reduce the adapter's power usage if the, device is, that, that, if the device connected to it is off or inactive for over five minutes. So if you turn your laptop off and it's connected to this thing and it, so it's not talking to it for five minutes, it, turn, it turns the power off and you save a little bit of juice and a little bit of electricity on it. Not a bad feature. You can turn it on if you wish to. I'm going to leave it off because I'm testing these right now. Okay, so let's click that off. Let's go take a look at the top one. Now, the top one is the one that we're not physically connected to with the Ethernet cable. It's, we're connected to it through the wall, through the, uh, the power lines in your house. So we have a basic setting. All the same things that apply, including the reset, um, you know, and the version, and be able to rename it. And as you can see, it's the same version. So we'll leave that alone. Uh, back here, we've got the advanced tab, all the same settings again. Nice to have access to that. And if I have multiple ones of these, they would show up in here and show you the link speed as well. So that's, that's nice. We've got the update uh, portion of this. Uh, that's cool. And QoS, as, as I was saying, and the mode for power saving. So all the same features. The difference is that you can... It, say you wanted to take one uh, one of these power line adapters off, you could remove it by hitting the trash button. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I don't need to do so, okay? So, again, there is neat features on this thing. So, uh, here you go to add a device. If you were going to add one, uh, we don't need to. But, uh, you know, you can manually do it. Uh, I'm not going to because I'm already got both of them uh, set up, connected. Go to secure and... You can secure the power line uh, network, but it's already done. You can you could redo it, but I'm I'm not going to bother. I, I mean that's up to you. If you're a security net, you can change it if you wish. Uh, refresh. We'll just update the uh, link connection uh, data. Let's go to LED next after that's done. All right, and it's it's, it's telling you here, you know, 914 megabits per second. Man, that's nice. And I will be testing them here in a second. Turn off, uh, to on or off LEDs to all the devices. So say you had 15 of these, instead of going for each one, boom, 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 to turn them off, you could just come in here and hit uh, on or off, and it would all turn off. Uh, I'm not worried about that. I, I don't mind the LEDs on right now. And then usage tips, which basically tells you don't use power strips with these devices because they don't work well through the power strips. 
So I'm going to end. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Again, you know, if it's a pass-through, and these are not pass-through uh, network adapters, uh, there's some that you can plug actually into the wall and then plug your plugs into it as well. That's that's a pass-through device. That's, that's cool. That would work for you as well. You can put a power strip on that, but you have to put it, the actual adapter, into the wall first and then the power strip into it. So that's it. So that's it for the software. It shows you the speed and I've showed you all the special features. So now we'll get into the testing of this and there's several ways to test this. You could just say, oh, well, I've got 940 megabits per second. Well, okay, let's see what we actually get. I'm going to use my land bench program, which is a, the, the test I did, the, the uh, bench test I used for uh, testing the cables, see what kind of speed we get on that. So let's do some speed testing here on these LAN adapters. Uh, I've got my LAN bench program set up here, ready to go. Let's just hit a test on it. And it's a network uh, a test that I used uh, to test the, the uh, wires themselves, the Cat5 wires against the Cat6s. And I'm using Cat6 cables right now, not the 5s that came with the, the actual uh, adapters. I, I, again, I'll put links to all that hardware in the video description below. I don't suggest using the Cat5s for anything at this point. You should be using at least Cat6, no matter what. Really, uh, you, you know, Cat5e is even becoming antiquated. So just go with the Cat6 cables. I'll put li links to those network cables in the video description below. And if you're using anything other than that currently on your network, I would suggest upgrade. They're not that expensive and they're worth it. So let's do the test. There we go. So uh, we're getting right now currently 157 megabits per second uh, and 84 megabits per second on the send. So we'll see what it averages out after the test is over. Uh, I, I, I started at file transfer and stopped it here just so that, you know, that'll be our next test after this land bench is finished. See what it gives us. Right now, TP-Link software is telling us that we're at 862 megabits per second. Uh, we're certainly not getting that. Uh, we're getting 157 megabits on the received end and uh, an average of 80 megabits per second on the send end. I don't think that's a bad deal. Uh, again, we're sending data over the power lines in our house. So, you know, uh, uh, they're not perfect either. Uh, but here we are, and it seems to be working okay. The test result there was 80, 79 megabits per second, almost 70, almost 80 megabits per second on the send, and 156 megabits per second on the receive. So that's over 100 megabits per second, which is, as far as I'm concerned, really decent, okay? So that's the LAN bench uh, program, and that's set up between two computers, no router, just a, a, a cat -sys cable, the, the LAN adapter goes through the power in the walls and then to another LAN adapter, to another CAT6 cable, to another computer. No router, nothing. So it's testing all that uh, hardware and that's what the speed it's giving us currently is. So let's do the file transfer test here. And this is about 75 gigs worth of data coming from uh, uh, the other laptop to this laptop through that same setup. No router, just the LAN cables and the power adapters. So right now we're getting about 16 megabits per second, megabytes per second, sorry, that's megabytes per second. So you take that number and multiply it by eight and you get the actual throughput. And uh, our LAN adapter over here says that we're at 890 megabits per second. I wonder what my other laptop's saying. More or less the same number. So, at this point, this is what we're getting, 16, 17 megabits per second, megabytes per second. Now I've seen as high as 33 megabytes per second, so I'm not sure why this is going so slow right now. Let me stop the program, try it again. Maybe it's because I ran both at the same time here, who knows, um, let me sh delete that, there we go. And we'll just try the transfer one more time here, see if we get a decent number. Maybe it was a pause, there we go, that's more decent. Yeah, it must have been the pause. So we're getting 24, almost 25 megabytes uh, per second. That would be in, in megabits, about 200 megabits per second, which is really decent. That's twice the speed of a 100 megabit uh, router. Uh, and 
Uh, you know, if you can't run an Ethernet cable between where you are and where you need data, and you can use this instead as a solution, this is a decent speed. If you were printing something, this would be more than fast enough to print with. And if you're transferring files, as you can see here, I'm tra transferring about, I don't know, uh, I think it's about 17, 18 uh, gigabytes worth of data. You can see that would take about 12 minutes. Now that's quite a bit of data. That's probably about, uh, in, in if you put it into a movie file size, probably about three or four, maybe five uh, movies, depending on the size of, of, the, of the movie and the actual, um, uh, what do you call it, resolution. But uh, again, th those are large files. This is a lot of data and it's coming through pretty quickly on this uh, setup. So I'm happy with that. Now, I'm just going to hit uh, stop on this here for a second and I'm going to go back here to these settings for one more thing because I know I know there'll be online gamers out there saying well what's the ping time okay and what ping times mean is the latency in the in the actual network is how fast can it turn a packet around how fast can it send a packet and receive one well let's see what what it can do here we're gonna do the ping test uh, for the online gamers who may be watching this and see if it's uh, decent so let's do a ping test. So you can see that the setting here is, is to online gaming on both of them. So that's the top one there. And on the bottom one, that's the default setting they come with anyway. So there, online game. So I'm testing them on the default setting. And when you take them out of the box, that's what they're set to. So let's uh, do the test here, ping. Uh, and I'm going to ping the other machine. Okay, and there we go, and we hit enter. Okay, so currently, not transferring anything over the network, I'm getting uh, 95, 77, 91. Um, let me stop the my ping test over here too. My, uh, sorry, there we go. My um, network test on the other side, so let's stop this too. And 99 milliseconds. Oh, look at that. So I guess the uh, land tester was causing a, a little bit of lag there. Um, five milliseconds, nine milliseconds, really decent uh, ping times from the two machines. Now remember, they're locally connected. They're not going through the internet. They're connected through land cables and uh, the LAN uh, adapters, the wall adapters, and then through the power lines in the wall. So they're physically connected together. So that great ping test or, or ping time is good, okay? Especially for online gamers. Uh, if you were doing this through Wi-Fi, it would be a lot higher latency. So, yeah, if you're trying to eliminate Wi-Fi uh, latency inside your home, this might be a solution for you, uh, especially if you're an online gamer. So, again, this only applies to them because uh, they know what I'm talking about. Anybody else probably doesn't even know or care about this, but the online gamers certainly do. So, yeah, for an online gamer to connect to his home router instead of using Wi-Fi, yeah, I'd say go for it. I'd say that's, it'd be a good solution. Uh, at least try it. You know, you can try it. And I'll put links to this hardware and the, the cables and stuff in the video description below. And you guys can comment, ask questions, or, you know, give me some advice or whatever. Uh, uh, even suggestions for videos. I appreciate it. Put them in the comment section below. And the links will be in the video description below this video as well. So, yeah, latency is pretty good. Now, this is latency with nothing going on in the network. So let's start that... Uh, File transfer again, and let's see what we get. So I'm gonna delete it and start that file transfer again from the other computer and see what happens to the latency. Well, it went up quite a bit, but it's still under 400 milliseconds. Uh, I'm getting 23, 24, 25, well, in the 20s. There, I saw a mid 20 there, almost 25. So almost 200 megabits per second being transferred uh, through this network currently and still getting in a, a sub 400 millisecond uh, uh, ping time on this. So yeah, not bad, not bad. So it's dropping down there a little bit, but that, it doesn't matter. It's going to vary. So let me stop this and see what happens to the, there you go. And it drops down. So yeah, latency obviously is going to be affected by file transfers, but again, for an online gamer who's trying to get their uh, uh, ping time down uh, and, you know, 
an alternative to Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is radio signals. They bounce all over the place. Latency is huge on those things because that's just the nature of radio signals. So next, um, just going to wrap this up. That's it for the testing. I think the, the product is very decent um, for the price of which I currently paid of under $50. So, I mean, you know, prices change from day to day, but uh, I'll put links for the hardware in the video description below. And if you're looking for a, a way of transferring or creating a network connection between two sides of your house and can't actually use an Ethernet con uh, connector or a LAN cable, which is the optimal way every time, uh, you know, maybe you don't have a basement or maybe it's just too much hassle. This might be a, a solution for you. Try it, see what happens. Uh, you know, I would suggest if, if you're not sure whether it's going to work for you or not, you can go with the uh, buying it from Amazon. And, you know, Amazon's really easy to return stuff to if there's a problem. Uh, so again, all the hardware will be linked in the video description below. Comments, questions, suggestions, please put them in the comment section below. I will be happy to answer, you know, your questions. And I'm pretty good about answering them pretty quickly. All right, let's wrap this up. That's it for my video on the power line adapters from TP-Link. If you liked this video and it helped you out in some way, do me a huge favor and click on the like button at the bottom right hand corner and give me a big thumbs up. That helps my channel, it helps my video, and I certainly greatly appreciate it. Also, up here on the top corner, you'll see a picture of me. That picture is a subscription link. If you click on that picture, you'll be subscribed to my channel. As part of the process of, of subscribing to my channel, you'll see a bell icon. When you see the bell icon, click the bell icon, and then you'll be notified every time I put up a new video. And then you can watch it at your own leisure. Once again, and like always, I want to thank you all for watching and for your time.